Okay, thank you. Sergeant Kotowski, please start your PC recording. Recording started. Okay, just give me a second. Good evening. Welcome to the remote hearing of the New York City Advisory Commission on Property Tax Reform. Everyone, please turn on your videos at this time. Silence all electronic devices. All written testimony can be submitted at nyc.gov slash property tax reform slash testimony. Closed captioning is available and can be accessed by clicking on the live script icon on the lower portion of your Zoom menu bar. Interpretación en Español está disponible en council.nyc.gov slash livestream. Lo pondré en el fondo de mi pantalla para que lo puedan copiar. Thank you. Chair, we are ready to begin. Thank you, Sergeant. Hi, my name is Mark Shaw. Um, I'm the senior advisor at the CUNY Institute for State and Local Governance, and I'm the chair of the advisory commission. Um, good evening. Today's Zoom hearing is the fourth of five borough hearings on the preliminary report of the advisory commission. The hearing is also scheduled for Manhattan this Wednesday, June 16th at 6 p.m. Hearings already occurred in Staten Island on May 11th, in Brooklyn on May 27th, and in Queens on June 9th. If you are unable to attend your borough's hearing, please know that members of the public may attend any hearing regardless of their home borough. As a reminder, all people wishing to testify must register on the Advisory Commission's website at least 24 hours prior to the start of the hearings. Also, for members of the public who are listening who would like to submit written testimony, they may do so at any time at nyc.gov slash property tax reform slash testimony. Tonight's hearing will be broadcast in Spanish through interpretation services and live streamed to the New York City Council's virtual hearing room three. A link to this live stream can be also be found at the commission's website, nyc.gov slash property tax reform on the hearings and meetings tab. 14 people are signed up to testify tonight. Before we begin with public testimony, I want to say thank you to all those members of the public who submitted written testimony, as well as those here tonight who are taking time out of their schedules to testify on the Advisory Commission's preliminary report. We value what each of you has to say, so please know that even if we don't directly respond to your testimony today, we are listening, and your testimony will be part of our deliberations. In January 2020, the Commission released 10 preliminary recommendations to reform the property tax system. Hearings were initially planned to begin in March 2020, but delayed to, due to COVID-19. We'd request that public testimony specifically respond to the Commission's 10 recommendations. I will now read the Commission's 10 preliminary recommendations. One, the Commission recommends moving co-ops, condominiums, and rental buildings with up to 10 units into a new residential class, along with one to three family homes. The property tax system would continue to consist of four classes of property, residential, large rentals, utilities, and commercial. The commission recommends using a two. The commission recommends using a sales-based methodology to value all properties in the residential class. Three, the commission recommends assessing every property in the residential class at its full market value. Four, the commission recommends that annual market value changes in the new residential class be phased in over five years at a rate of 20% per year, and that assessed value growth caps should be eliminated. Five, the commission recommends creating a partial homestead exemption for primary resident owners with income below a certain threshold. The exemption would be available to all eligible primary resident owners in the residential class and would additionally replace the current condo co-op tax abatement. Six, the commission recommends creating a circuit breaker within the property tax system to lower the property tax burden on low income primary resident owners based on the ratio of property tax paid to income. Seven, the commission recommends replacing the current class share system with a system that prioritizes predictable and transparent tax rates for property owners. The new system would freeze the relationship of tax rates among the tax classes for five year periods, after which time the city would could, would conduct a mandated study to analyze if adjustments need to be made to maintain consistency in the share of taxes relative to fair market value borne by each class. Eight, the commission recommends that current valuation methods should be maintained for properties not in the new residential class. 
That is rental buildings with more than 10 units, utilities and commercial. Nine, the commission recommends a gradual transition to the new system for current owners with an immediate transition into the new system whenever a property in the new residential class is sold. And finally, 10, the commission recommends instituting comprehensive reviews of the property tax system every 10 years. I would like to now introduce to the public and the, to the other, members of, the other members of the commission. Um, we have, I believe with us, in addition to myself, um, four other commissioners tonight, and we'll um, start with introductions in alphabetical order, Carol O'Clarican. Thank you, I'm having a little trouble here getting myself on. Thank you. Uh, I'm Carol O'Claricon and I'm a resident of uh, Manhattan and I've been a New Yorker since 1974. I own a co-op apartment on the Upper West Side. I am currently a um, adjunct professor at Columbia School of International and Public Affairs. I have been in the past both the finance commissioner and the budget director of New York City. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Ken, Kenneth Knuckles. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ken Knuckles. I am currently the vice chair of the New York City Planning Commission. I am a resident of the Bronx in the Wakefield section, uh, where I have lived since 1984. I am also a former deputy Bronx borough president, and I look forward to hearing your testimony this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Next up, we have James Parrott. Good evening. James Parrott, I'm a director of economic and fiscal policies at the Center for New York City Affairs at the New School. I have owned a single family house in Brooklyn for 25 years. I look forward to hearing the testimony this evening. Thank you. And last but certainly not least, we have Elizabeth Velez also of the Bronx. Good evening, everyone. Like, uh, like was said by Mark, I am a resident. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Velez. I'm a resident of the, the Bronx and a renter uh, in the Bronx. I, I rent, but I'm also a business owner um, and in Manhattan. Thank you all for your contribution coming out tonight. Contribution to New York City and this process by helping us um, continue on in these deliberations. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Elizabeth. In addition to our commission members, we also have with us the ex officio members representing the mayor's office and the city council. I'd like to now turn over to our moderator for the evening, Emra. Thank you, Chair Shaw. My name is Emra Adev and I work with the New York City Council's Finance Division. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone that you will be on mute until you are recognized to speak, at which time you will be unmuted by the Zoom host. If you mute yourself after you have been unmuted, you will need to be unmuted again by the host. Please be aware that there could be a delay in muting and unmuting, so please be patient. I will be calling on panelists to testify one by one, so please listen for your name to be called. Each panelist will have two minutes for their testimony. Commission members, you have the ability to unmute yourself during the hearing at any point. So if you have any questions for our panelists, you may unmute yourself at the appropriate time, but please remember to go back on mute once you have completed your question. We will now start with testimony from elected officials, followed by the general public. Panelists, once your name is called, a member of our staff will unmute you and the Sergeant at Arms will give you the go ahead to begin. Please wait for the Sergeant to announce that you may begin before delivering your testimony. We will start with Corey Burek, followed by Cleopatra Brown. Time starts now. Thank you. I'm Corey Birek, and as I testified to you back in October 2018, I have researched and written and testified on real property tax reform going back some years to my time at Hofstra Law School. Much of my research and recommendations are on my website, strategicpublicpolicy.com, and there's a link to all my work at the end of this testimony. Uh, my research reflects my service in government to a city council member and two borough presidents, candidates for citywide, state, and local offices, involvement in civic groups, including co-founding and later leading the Borough-wide Queens Civic Congress. And I've testified at many city hearings on this. And 
I want to just, you know, it'll be quick to go into uh, my take on your recommendations. Um, on number one, lumping together the co-ops, condos, and rental buildings with 10 or less units with the one to three family homes leaves out many moderate income co-ops, condos, and rentals that house moderate and lower income New Yorkers. Worse, I believe that will perpetuate the existing valuation inequities that benefit the, the owners of some of the wealthiest and most, most luxurious New York housing. Instead, assess all residential property at market value and apply a homestead exemption to assure affordability of the home, whether an owner occupied one, two or three family home, a, co a condo, a cooperative unit or rental housing developed as such. This targets relief where it ought to be and should be set initially to maintain existing taxation levels for those moderate income homeowners and reducing the taxes where inequities exist, like in places like Southeast Queens. To help lower income residents, the circuit breaker refundable ought to come into play. On two, you need to clarify the application of the sales uh, based methodologies proposed for residential properties to apply to all co-ops and condos so the luxury properties no longer get the values akin to nearby rent regulated I'm houses. Uh, for three, uh, full value uh, assessment must make sure to capture immediately the unintended benefits received by non-owner occupied properties, class one properties which I value at at least $6 billion that could be raised and would help fund uh, the reforms that I'm proposing. It would also help return several hundred thousand housing units to full residential use. On four, the phase in of full market value needs to be carefully reviewed as it benefits those without any homestead exemption and may offer a financial benefit that others will seek to institutionalize. Five, rather than apply a homestead exemption just based on income, it should be applied based on the value of the property. A full value for class one, I recommend uh, using the $800,000 uh, value and for co-ops and condo units, $650,000. I agree on the circuit breaker. And then on number seven, the class share system has helped to perpetuate inequities and repackaging it differently changes nothing. Eight, on valuing commercial and rental buildings based on use, so-called income capitalization, it must be clearly implemented so not to apply to any cooperative or condominium housing. Again, I'm thinking in terms of the uh, luxury co-ops and condos in particular. And nine, a gradual transition helps the wealthiest owners of the, mo uh, the most and the system, all the data we need exists can be set up immediately to help moderate and lower income taxpayers. And finally, number 10, if we get this right now, any further reviews would only recommend minor, if any, tweaks. So I want to thank you. And, you know, this full testimony is on my website and it has also been submitted to the commission and links to my prior work, again, is available on my website. Thank you, Mr. Bierk. Um, we will now hear from Cleopatra Brown, followed by uh, Bernadette Ferreira. Time starts now. Good evening, everyone. I want to thank the New York City Advisory Commission for the opportunity to share my testimony here today. My name is Dr. Cleopatra Brown. I am a property owner. I, I can't hear her very well. I'm sorry, Dr. Brown, can you move closer to your microphone? Yes. Can you hear me? A little better, but not much. Okay, maybe if I could turn my volume up. Is that better? Yes. Okay, thank you. Once again, my, my name is Dr. Cleopatra Brown. I'm a property owner in Brownsville section of Brooklyn. I've served six years in the United States Navy from August 1982 to May 1988 and two years in the reserves here in New York City. I am currently the chairperson of the Community Board 16 Veterans Affairs Committee a member of the Community Board Three Veterans Committee and an advocate for my community and the veteran population. On behalf of the Community Board Three and Community Board 16 Veterans Affairs Committee, we respectfully request that the New York City Department of Finance recognize and consider establishing a real property tax exemption for Cold War veterans under the New York State Real Property Tax Law 458B. Currently, 
New York State, Hempstead, Rockland, Suffolk, and Nassau County, just to name a few, have adopted legislation and established real property tax exemption for Cold War veterans. Cold War veterans are male and female who served on active duty in the United States forces from September the 2nd, 1945 to December the 26th, 1991, and was discharged or released under honorable conditions. According to the New York City Department of Finance, the only veterans who qualify for real property tax exemption are those who served during the following conflicts. World War I, World War II, the Korean, Vietnam, Gulf War, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Currently, Cold War veterans are being denied and told that we do not qualify as veterans because the New York City real property tax law does not recognize Cold War veterans. Every Cold War veteran bravely answered the call to duty. We raised our hands and committed to serve and protect our country. I'm and sorry. we accomplished that mission. As Cold War veterans, we have, ha we have earned the right to be recognized as a veteran. And we are respectfully requesting that New York City Department of Finance recognize us as well. Community Board 3, Community Board 16, and the Brooklyn Borough Board had voted in favor and passed a resolution to amend and expand New York City Department of Finance real property tax to Cold War veterans. On behalf of the Veterans Affairs Committee and the Cold War veterans residing in New York City, we recommend the advisory committee to amend the New York City Department of Finance real property tax exemption to include Cold War veterans. I'd just like to thank the commissioner for their time, the consideration, and the opportunity to, to express the concerns of my fellow veterans. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Um, we will now hear from Bernadette Ferreira, followed by Trinisha Williams. Time starts now. Thank you, good evening. My name is Bernadette Ferrara and I am testifying today as president of the Van Ness Neighborhood Alliance, a working class homeowner and Van Ness and a candidate for city council to represent Van Ness and the other communities within Bronx District 15. I'd like to challenge three of the proposed recommendations. Number one, moving co-ops, condominiums and rental buildings with up to 10 units into a new residential class along with one to three family homes. Number two, assessing every property in the residential class at its full market value. And number three, annual market value changes in the new residential class being phased in over five years at 20% per year. The market price of co-ops, condominiums, and rental buildings with up to 10 units will pull the assessed value of one to three family homes up and property taxes along with it. These recommendations will accelerate the middle class flight out of the Bronx and City Council District 15. The Bronx has the highest effective property tax rate in New York City at 0.83% tax uh, over the other boroughs. For this reason, I recommend these proposals to the New York City Advisory Commission. Number one, in calculating the fair market value of a home, limit comparables to homes of similar style, size, and age within a one mile radius. Two, homeowners should be able to challenge a property assessment quarterly instead of just once a year. Three, veterans who purchase a primary resident using money from their pensions, insurance settlements, or bonuses can receive an exemption that reduces their assessment, property taxes, uh, and school taxes. Four, lower the rate at which seniors can claim from 65 to 62. And five, extend the COVID moratorium on the 3.25% interest rate on late payments for homeowners whose annual income is less than 150,000. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to let you know how to Bye. make property taxes fairer and more affordable to my community. Thank you all for your work and your time. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. We are now here from Trinisha Williams, followed by Marianne Rothman. Time starts now. Good evening. Thank you so much for your time. I'm going to sort of keep myself pretty, pretty brief on my um, testimony. I'm a resident of Brooklyn, New York. I've been a New Yorker since birth. 
and I currently live in South Brooklyn in the Flatlands area. And my co-op that we live that I live in, there are several several of our residents are older, elderly, and a lot have been affected recently by the COVID and have a lot of financial um, uh, issues going on. And I just want the commission to really be thoughtful on different parts of the city when you're imposing this increase in taxes. Um, I think some of the residents here will need to be displaced if there was a significant increase. I'm quite sure the commission has a lot of rules and regulations and reasons for needing to make some changes, but I just want you to be mindful that there are people who are elderly, who have a lot of financial um, issues and may not be able to sustain such increases in property taxes. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your testimony. We'll now hear from Marianne Rothman, followed by Sheila Lewandowski. Time starts now. Uh, good evening. My name is Marianne Rothman. I'm the executive director of the Council of New York Cooperatives and Condominiums, representing hundreds of the housing cooperatives and condominiums in all five boroughs of New York City and beyond. Since 1990, when we founded the Action Committee for Reasonable Real Estate Taxes, we've advocated for fair, equitable and easily understood property taxes for all New York City taxpayers. We thank the Advisory Commission for your preliminary report with 10 proposals that set us on a pathway to having one class for all of the city's residential property with easily understood assessments based on market value. I should mention, or maybe I shouldn't, that this doesn't necessarily, market value assessments doesn't necessarily mean that taxes are going to be higher. It means that we'll be able to clearly understand the assessments that we receive on our property. Done right, and we hope the, that the Department of Finance will do it right, people of lower income, and lower valued homes may find significant reductions in their taxes, um, but I digress. Um, I would like to encourage the advisory commission to complete the process of tax reform by creating a parallel commercial class, which would include all of the current class three and four properties, as well as the rental properties remaining in class two all of which would, be con would continue to be assessed by current methodology. We respectfully suggest that the four class system from S7000A has long since outlived its usefulness so that there's no need to preserve its complex class share system, whose balance was more- I'm expired. I'm gonna take an extra minute, whose balance was more frequently sacrificed than preserved during the history of our current system. The two class property system that we propose, one residential and one commercial would be inextricably interlocked by means of a fixed ratio governing increases in their tax rate. We would suggest that this ratio be one to two. We support the commission's recommendation of a review five years into the implementation of this comprehensive property tax reform program. At that time, reviewers should consider whether the one to two residential to commercial tax ratio needs fine tuning. Thank you for this opportunity to express our views. Thank you for your testimony. We will now hear from Sheila Lewandowski, followed by Remy Sal Salas. Time starts now. Good evening. My name is Sheila Lewandowski. I reside and work in the occupied lands of the Lenape and Canarsie people, otherwise known as Queens. Thank you to the Bronx and to this committee for welcoming me this evening. For accessibility purposes, to those who will be listening later, I identify as a non-disabled middle-aged cisgender white woman of Eastern European descent. I have long brown street hair streaked with gray, back in a loose bun, and I'm wearing a dark blue blouse, glasses, and earrings. I preface what I'm going to say in support of the efforts to increase equity in how real estate taxes are applied in New York City. I own a home in Long Island City with my former husband, to which he does not provide support. We don't have children. I'm divorced, living on a single income in the five-figure range. Since I run a, a nonprofit art center that I founded, I have no pension, 
um, and bought the house back in 2001 for $265,000. Lucky me, right? The city now values it over a million, forget what the banks do. When we bought the house, the taxes were $1,200 annually. Last year, they're 4,500 and change. I share this because I'm scared that if I'm taxed at the full market value of my home, I won't be able to afford it. I could not tell from your recommendations how those who are, not, who are land rich and income poor or income getting by would fare. I also encourage a system where one's primary home is not taxed as an unrealized gain. I, I recognize that I have access to capital because of the value of my home, but even that is tempered by my income and lack of family capital since I grew up poor in public housing, immigrant children, et cetera. The other recommendation I do want to make is because I'm also involved with Nonprofit New York and a lot of nonprofits citywide and the arts sector citywide, is that the city find a way to relieve nonprofits, especially small ones, community-based ones of real estate taxes that are passed on to them. I have other stuff that I will, I will actually send in writing, but as an example, during the pandemic, I run a nonprofit theater in Long Island City that would be priced out if it weren't for the generosity of the landlord. He, I'm brought, thank you. he brought the rent down last year, but he had to increase it because of the increase in his real estate taxes. I know a number of nonprofits citywide have been asking for years for some way for the city to incentivize landlords renting long-term to nonprofits um, and somehow relieving them of real estate taxes without just passing it on through there. I do add, I'm first vice chair of my community board two in Queens. I'm chair of the transportation committee and I'm engaged in many ways. I add that because I see this over and over again and I don't wanna be displaced as someone who's engaged. And I know there are other people citywide who've been in their communities for generations who if you tax them at full market rate, they're out. So thank you very much to the Bronx, to the committee. Please do the right thing. Have you, I, I hate to put a burden on you, but I'll ask this question anyway. Have you submitted written testimony on this or is there some way in which you could just write up what you've just yeah, given? I up? actually typed this up about an hour ago, so I will send it to you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, we'll now hear from Remy Sal Salas. Time starts now. Hello, thank you for having me today to, with the opportunity to testify. My name is Remy Salas. Um, I'm here as a member of the PSC Union that represents um, about 30,000 faculty and staff at CUNY. And as an adjunct professor at BMCC um, and a lifelong resident of the Bronx and also a property owner in the Bronx, uh, we want to call your attention to a significant source of untapped revenue from the property tax exemption given to private universities in, in New York City, specifically NYU and Columbia. NYU and Columbia have a massive expanded, they massively expanded their real estate footprint in recent decades um, and have proposed their real estate investment uh, in New York City. According to 2018, the potential uh, property tax responsibility of NYU, uh, it's, it's almost about 200 million. And while Columbia University would be almost at 275 million, according to the Department of Finance formula, we are proposing to we are proposing a rethink of those tax exemptions as one way to invest and provide needed resources to New York's public university, CUNY. This is not an attack uh, towards NYU or Columbia, but we because we value our colleagues as well as the internet intellectual community that has generated by NYU and Columbia, which provided a lot of resources in New York City. But while NYU and Columbia pay no property taxes and their student gets so much benefits of small classes and full-time professors and uh, counselors and, 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 and just a lot of uh, equipment for their libraries, CUNY students, which educates my, my majority of low income students and native New Yorkers have not had, have not had any resources to help them deal with the crowded classrooms, leaky ceilings, inspired. as well as a short change of professors. So that we're, we are proposing, and hopefully in the spirit of equity, we are proposing that the commission could reconsider the tax exemption of NYU and Columbia that collects, that they collect annually. In, and invest the revenue in CUNY, the People's University of New York, while the majority of New Yorkers 
the university that majority of New Yorkers attend. Thank you so much. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, this conclu concludes the public testimony. If we have inadvertently forgotten to call on someone to testify, if that person could use the raise hand function and raise their hand in Zoom, we will try to hear from you now. Chair Shaw, it appears that no other members of the public would like to testify, so I'm gonna hand it back to you. Thank you, Amber. I'd like to thank all the members of the public and elected officials who joined us tonight to give feedback on the commission's preliminary report. Your comments are, as, are important as the commission develops its final recommendations. As a reminder, the commission will be holding virtual hearing, a virtual hearing in Manhattan on June 16th. As I mentioned earlier, hearings also occurred in Staten Island on May 11th, Brooklyn on May 27th, and Queens on June 9th. Members of the public may attend any hearing regardless of their home borough. If you wish to testify, you must register on the Advisory Commission's website at least 24 hours prior to the start of the hearings. Also, for members of the public who are listening who would like to submit written testimony, you may do so at any time. To register to testify or submit written testimony, please visit the Commission's website at nyc.gov slash property tax reform. Finally, I'd like to thank the members of the Commission for their time tonight, and especially the staffs of the City Council and the Mayor's Office for making this hearing possible. Good evening, everybody. Chair Shaw? Yes. Sorry, uh, we have a raised hand, sorry, from Marianne Ruffin. Um, go ahead, Marianne. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, is there a deadline on the submission of uh, testimony or additional testimony? Can, will we be able to still submit after Wednesday? Uh, you, you will be able to su still submit after Wednesday, and we, we welcome all testimony. As soon as we're done with the hearings, we're going to start to have um, discussions amongst the commission members to try to wrap up some final recommendations. So the sooner the better, but absolutely feel free to spend an extra couple of days if need be. Thank you. And with that, I think we're saying good night. Thank you. Thanks, good night. everybody. Thank you. Good night, everyone.